This is drone mapping from A to Z. And in this episode, we're going to cover creating and processing a map in its simplest form. Okay, here's the lineup. Pre-flight checks, hardware, software from the front end and the back end, and then we're going to create a 3D map because chicks dig mapping. And if you're anything like me, you're bothered by online guides and painful tutorials. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are at uh, the building where we're going to make a 3D model of. So we'll actually use two applications today. We'll use the first one, which is drone deploy, and that will allow us to automatically set the, uh, the flight path, and then we'll go into the DJI Go app to finish uh, the 3D model because we'll have to shoot the sides of the building. What we're going to use today is a Phantom 3 uh, Professional. I painted mine red. Uh, that way, when we're up against uh, the sky, if there's clouds or any other kind of uh, easy to see background or any kind of background at all that would blend in with your drone uh, that way you're sure to still see it any bright color uh, will work but uh, I went with red first thing we do when we get to the uh, the area the site that we're going to serve uh, the site that we're going to map is uh, check the area for any kind of high um, altitude uh, poles, wires, any kind of obstructions that might cause problems. Uh, and then from there you'll check everything else out and uh, launch. on plan a new flight then we'll label our flight or our map I'll call this one 3d model All right, when you see this grid blue shaded area and the green lines you just put your finger in the middle move it directly over the structure And you'll move each little white dot to create a polygon, a rectangle, square, whatever shape you need to make sure that you're going to fly over the object. And you want to make sure you overlap. You don't want it to be exactly lined up over, over your, your object. You want to be able to pass over, you know, give yourself a good buffer where you, the, the structure that you're modeling is completely out of frame by each pass. And in this case, this is an old map, so there's actually a building. And once that's lined up, we'll go back to the map, we'll adjust the altitude. In this case, it's a three-story building so I know that 90 feet is a safe distance and I'm still close enough to the building that I'll be able to get a lot of detail. Then next you'll change your uh, flight direction. I like to change mine to where it has the least amount of stops so I've turned it where I'm going a long ways with the building. And then next you'll have overlap. Uh, drone deploy suggests 70%. Uh, I'll say on the side lap, that's okay, 70, 75. The more overlap, the more time it takes. On the front lap, 
I suggest 80 to 85, 80 minimum, uh, because that's where you're going to get uh, a lot of your quality. And then of course you can change your starting waypoint or not. I usually just make it work as closest to where it starts. Alright, so when we go back it says the duration of the flight is 3 minutes 55 seconds. You're going to cover about 1 acre and 0.15 inch per pixel resolution. So all that means is you're going to be estimated time in the air of 4 minutes and you're going to have a really good picture. Alright, so you hit the go button and it goes through its own little flight check list. It says you passed. Then your telemetry will come up on your left hand side. You should have a picture of the screen that what your camera sees on the right, uh, right top corner. Once the drone has completed the mission that we just created, it will return to home and land. At that point, you'll want to close down the Drone Deploy app and open an app that will allow you to fly freely because next we're going to take pictures of the building from the side. This is going to help make your 3D model very detailed. So any app that will allow you to set your pictures in an interval in the shortest interval possible. I like to set mine at two seconds so I will typically use another application which we'll go over in another episode. So in this case I'm just going to take pictures manually. Since it's three levels tall we're going to break this into two sections. The top level and the bottom level taking pictures as close together as possible. We'll take pictures all the way around the top level first. So you go across the building and curve around the side. After we go all the way across the top, we'll repeat the process by coming back and going down to the uh, lower level. All right, now that we're ready to process, you'll go into the drone deploy website. You'll click on uh, upload your pictures. I like to go to the structure instead of the terrain. It uh, makes a better 3D model. So you'll check that. You'll find the pictures on your uh, computer wherever you put them in. And then after you select all your pictures, you'll click on open. It will upload the camera positions. So the green dots represent where each picture was taken and the white dots represent the frame or the boundary line around your structure. And there we have our completed map ready to process and I'll name this again 3D model. And then go over to the bottom right hand of the screen where you have a flashing blue cloud and once you click that, processing will begin. Now you'll receive an email telling you that your project is finished and when it is done, go to 3D model, uh, the map you created, you click on your 3D option, then you go down here, the bottom right hand corner where it says SD, always like to look at the HD version. And you'll see at the top of the screen this bar Sometimes it'll take a little bit to process. Once it uh, finishes, you'll have your 3D model. You can turn it, look at it. Or the better option is to go up here to the top and export it. You put in your email address and it'll take a few minutes, but it'll process in either an object file, OBJ, or .las last file. I suggest downloading the object file because most computers are already set up to view that type of a file.